That doesn't sound good. Hey there guys. So if you saw the description for the video that I did on this little Burger King Zapdos toy, you'll see in there that I mentioned that I had a hard drive fail on me while I was making that, and that's absolutely true. Funny enough, I was already planning on making a video like this, top down, about hard drives. It just happened to give me a broken hard drive that I could go ahead and dissect for you. But I don't want it to just stop there. So in addition to this hard drive, I figured I'd go ahead and show off the differences between that and something like a two and a half inch laptop hard drive. But I didn't want it to stop there either. So we've got a standard three and a half inch desktop hard drive and then the laptop size hard drive and the you know two and a half inch form factor. The advent of the laptop hard drive was just a boon to mobile computing just because we get something that's almost the same size storage as this in a much smaller form factor, laptops could become thinner and things could become more mobile, lighter weight, easier to lug around. These are fantastic just because of that technological innovation. But these aren't the smallest hard drives that are in consumer electronics. So a little bit after the second generation iPod, you know, the first and second gen iPods had drives pretty much the same as this in there. They just had a different connector. But along comes an even smaller hard drive in the iPod's life. This one's out of my fifth gen iPod and it's, um, yeah, it speaks for itself. It's a 30 gig drive, but it seems to only hold about 8 gigs of music, and that doesn't, uh, that doesn't quite add up. But, this isn't even the smallest drive that's been in an iPod. Now for that, we'd have to come over to the micro drive. These are produced by Hitachi for the iPod Mini. They did that in 2004 and 2005. In 2005, they did introduce the 6 gig micro drive, which is same size but 50 percent more storage these are actually still working i'm going to put these back off to the side i do have a uh, another dead four gig drive that's what we're going to be taking apart today but i suppose i should go ahead and uh, get started There we go. Controller board is off. Okay, and that just comes right off. So, here is the right arm. This is what goes out onto the disc. It has a little writer tip there, and that flips individual magnets polarity between positive and negative. Oh, look, there's the camera. Nifty. But anyway, if we look, we see that we actually have several arms here that all go down to separate platters in there. There are four glass platters in here. Yeah, four glass platters all being accessed by arms on it. Oof. It is not hard to tell why I had to go and replace this drive. But anyway, that's the big boy. Now let's take a look at this. So this is the only drive that I didn't own beforehand. This one had to be purchased for about $15 on Amazon. It's just some refurbished 120 gig laptop hard drive. And I don't plan on using it. It's literally just for this video. Let's see if there's any hidden screws under this label. Not one there, but is there one down here? Alright, so now we should be able to that off of there. This should just come right off then. Okay. Ah, oh, 
okay. It's got a nice tight friction fit on there. There we go. We take a look, see, looks like we've got two different right heads accessing two different platters in there. So same thing, just smaller. So now let's take a look back at our friend, the dubious at best fifth gen iPod drive. And as you can see, it's just yet again, an even tinier version of the same exact thing. And this one only has a single platter, single right head, but so far these have all looked virtually identical on the inside. But yeah, just the same thing, but smaller over and over and over again. Now on to the micro drive. Now this is the only one that I've already taken apart. Uh, the only screw that was hidden by a label is that one there. But let's go ahead and get our our Y triple zero three lobe bit. There, tiny, comically small. It's practically the size of an SD card. Oh, actually, I could turn this thing into an SD card holder. That'd be pretty nifty. Anyway, yet again, single platter. Now, actually, can I? And here is the platter. Incredibly small. By the way, that on the tip is one of the screws from the iPod Mini's micro drive. Everything about it is just tiny. There we go. So years and years decades of innovation they managed to get this down to the size of this but anyway the years go on and technology drives all these parts smaller and smaller and smaller they just become more and more impressive you know until ssds replaced everything i'm gonna go ahead and get all of this cleaned up um Till then, y'all have a great day. Harry Potter and the Voided Warranty.